speaker coming up shortly. Matter of fact, right about now. Uh, it's Eric Wunderlich. He's from the Massachusetts Patients Advocacy Alliance. These are the folks that are working with the legislature here in Massachusetts to make medical marijuana legal. And uh, come on up, let's hear it from Eric. These folks are doing a wonderful job out there. Basically, we were formed in 2009 in July uh, by Whitney Taylor, uh, one of the one of the head people on the decriminalize uh, campaign, uh, and uh, also Matt Allen. And they're formed as a social group. We're, we're just designed to do social advocacy for a variety of different things. MPA is a project, uh, and one one part of what we're doing. Uh, basically, what it is is 99% volunteer grassroots, patients, family members of patients, uh, doctors, organizers. And this is all that we do is we go and we talk to the legislature. We work on uh, medical cannabis here in the state. And um, what we, basically what I do every day is I go and visit with patients. I take them to and from the places that they need to go to, sometimes just to the grocery store, sometimes it's to talk to the representative or their senator. And this is the key part of the work that we do is not only the outreach to patients and just saying, hi, I'm a patient. And I may not have exactly what you have, but you're not alone. You're not the only person in the world with, you know, ALS. You're not the only person in the world with, you know, cancer. You're not the only other person in the world with, um, you know, who's suffering from this, who actually finds a lot of relief from cannabis. So being that we're a completely grassroots group, you know, we really do rely on donations of time, of labor, of phone calling, whatever. So if there's anything that you guys can do to help, we really would appreciate that. Also, before I get too deep into the text of the speech, we do have, um, there's an initiative. We're trying to gather signatures for the initiative to get medical cannabis on the, on the ballot in November uh, for the big election, November of next year. So if you would please come by, if you're registered voters, and sign up for that, that'd be great. Um, we have, uh, we currently are working to reform drug policies in the state, and basically in the form of medical cannabis. Um, we, we know that there is a need for it. You know, we know from our own anecdotal evidence, but we also know from polling. The most recent poll that's been conducted in this state, 81% of the populace of this entire state believes that medical cannabis is something that is not only necessary, but worthwhile, and something that we can all benefit from. Um, in addition, I'm sure you've seen last week, 50% of the country believes that cannabis should be legal, period, whether it's for medical or for not. That's not something that I'm really gonna to speak to, I'm just gonna to speak to the medical aspect of it. But as you can see, time, time has passed. You know, it's not 1973 anymore. It's not, you know, we have within our grasp, if we just stay focused, we actually can make a difference. Uh, and the way that I'd like to talk to you about making a difference is, is talking to your friends and your family, talking to your representatives and your senators, talking to your local and state, uh, your state representatives, to tell them this is something that is important to me. Um, if you haven't registered to vote yet, really, that's probably the most important thing that you could possibly do because the only thing that po politicians listen to, <clears throat> excuse me, the only thing that politicians listen to are voters and engaged voters, people who are part of something that they believe in, they actually want to hear from. Um, you know, we've been endorsed by the Massachusetts Nurses Association, Massachusetts Public Health Association, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition, Mass Bar Association, the ACLU, AIDS Action Committee, um, Cambridge Cares About AIDS, the Massachusetts Hepatitis Patient Empowerment Project, and many, many other organizations. We've also gotten endorsements from uh, local law enforcement uh, agencies as well, and we are working with the legislature to try to forward this agenda. So on the table, we currently we have, uh, there's, a, there's a bill in front of the House and Senate Committee, Health and Human Services, uh, that has 33 co-sponsors, which is the most that has, that's three times more than ever before. We are on the cusp of something dramatic, something really, really special, um, but we need your help. So if you can, please come take a look at, come take a look at the Facebook. We've got a website, masscompassion.org. Um, you know, and, and then 
and uh, the Facebook. We also have a Twitter, and that kind of works, sort of. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not necessarily as savvy as we, we should be. <clears throat> um, you know, and the, you all know there's a reason that we need to reform current drug policies, whether it's the racist aspect of current drug laws, whether it's uh, whether it's just you know the fact that we as a society somehow have chosen to look at patients and say, well, you deserve to be in pain, or you deserve to be on heavy, heavy narcotics that make it so that you can't live your life. Well, you know, you deserve to you know to suffer from from the nausea that comes from chemotherapy, and this is something that I and and many of our advocates feel is just completely unjust. Um, you know, so that's that's pretty much what we're what we're working on. We're literally going door to door in the House and Senate talking to our representatives, taking people, and letting them share their stories. Um, so if you can help in any way, shape, or form, please do that. And please take a look at our website. We've got a lot of important information on it, the Facebook as well. Um, and then last but not least, register to vote. Get out there. Talk to, talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. The only way this thing is going to get done is hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, person-to-person. -person. I'm a person. I'm in pain. I use cannabis for my for my my own suffering and I really need you to help me so that I don't have to worry about the dog, the door getting kicked in or my dog's getting shot by a SWAT team. Um, and that's not, that's not something, it's, you know, it's something that sounds very mediapathic, but it's also something that actually happens in real life around this country every single day. In this state, people are not having their medicine because they're afraid they're going to end up in jail where they'll just die. Um, and that's, that's criminal. Um, the, la the, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, you know, People listen, people listen when they talk, when they hear from their neighbors, and they hear from their friends and their family. So even if it's hard, even if it's not something that necessarily you think they're going to be responsive to, I really think that it's important for you to talk to people about medical cannabis and how it has changed people's lives. It's made people's lives better. Um, and even when it's hard, this is, this is the part that is, that, you know, right now, if we do the hard work now, it'll be so much easier later. Um, and by that, I'd like to draw an analogy to about the early 80s. There was a time in this country, not all that long ago, where everybody knew that tomorrow we're going to have legalization. Everybody's going to be able to grow their own. Everybody's going to be able to do whatever that they want to do with that, um, with cannabis. And, you know, we didn't follow through on some things that could have been followed through on on a national level. And as a result, we had Ronald Reagan elected president, and the DEA's budget went in a 10 time increase what, from what it was when Nixon when Nixon started it. Then we had the wonderful war on drugs, which we're still suffering the effects of now. So even though it seems like the momentum is on our side, even though it seems like 81% of the people in Massachusetts you know, support medical cannabis, even though 50% of the people in this whole country, from a Gallup poll not taken particularly that long ago, maybe finished and published last week, 50%, that's only half. We need 55%, we need 62%, we need you know, people to be vocal, to be advocates, to talk to politicians. We need to elect politicians who follow what we believe, not just what just one part of our agenda, but the entire agenda. And this is our time now. You don't want to look back at this 20 years from now and say, gosh, if only, if only I'd written that letter, if only I'd talked to that representative or that senator. This is our time. This is the time that we can make the last, the last yard to get to the touchdown. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. Thank you very much.